The most important measure of human progress really for me is the civility that we show each other, both as people we meet and as a global civilization. I think um, that really is important, whether it's the poorest people or the least advantaged people or you know, the, the wealthiest. Well, for me personally, a fulfilled life is all about adventure. I, I love uh, challenge and I love learning. So if, I'm, if I feel like I'm adventuring, even if it's into a book or into a jungle, you know, um, I'm happy, I feel fulfilled. If I'm learning, if I'm challenged, um, I, I hate sitting there um, not doing much, <laughs> but I guess everyone's different. Sir David Attenborough. I remember watching him on television going into remotest New Guinea in the probably 1960s, making contact with a group of people, New Guineans, who'd never met a European before, and walking through this amazing jungle. And uh, that really inspired me. I must have been a, a teenager at the time, but uh, I decided that going into the jungles in New Guinea was what I wanted to do. So uh, that was a huge inspiration. And of course, books as well. You know. I've come to the view a long time ago, I suppose, that most of the most interesting people uh, who ever lived are now dead, but they've left us books, wonderful books. People like Charles Darwin, Alfred Russell Wallace in, in my field, um, various other greats. Um, and I, I, I think that the inspiration you get from reading their stories is, is enormous. Well, I had, a, I think, quite an ordinary childhood. I grew up uh, in the suburbs of Melbourne uh, in the 1950s, and that was a pretty raw frontier place, looking back on it. You know, the city was only 120 years old. Um, this, it hadn't grown very much as a city. Um, and I remember a couple of things. One was that um, the bush was being knocked down everywhere to make way for new houses and, and, and so forth. So swamps were being drained trees were being felled. And I remember asking my mother when I was about seven, I suppose, what, what it was all about. And she said, oh, that's progress. And I decided at that moment, progress wasn't really something that I wanted to have anything much to do with, because all of my childhood haunts were just going under the bulldozer. But then, it must have been about a year later, I, I was down at the beach, because the beach was the one place that wasn't being altered very much. It was lovely, you know, I could snorkel and fish and all the rest of it, it was fantastic. Um, I was down and I found a little fossil, a little thing about that big. A little, it turned out that it was a, a sea urchin, a fossilised sea urchin. I remember taking it to a librarian and the librarian said, oh, you should take it into the museum. And I did, I remember in my school uniform, my little shorts and things, I took the train into the museum with my fossil in my hand, went through the, uh, the great doorway of the museum as it was, big old Victorian building, and uh, went to the guards and they said, oh, you wait here, someone will come down to see you. And a man in a white lab coat came down. I still to this day don't know who he was. He may have been the local cleaner for all I knew, but, but he was kind enough to take me upstairs to this marvelous fossil collection. I remember row after row of cabinets. I remember walking past an Egyptian mummy that was in the hallway. Um, and he pulled out a, a drawer in the cabinet and there was a fossil just like mine. He said, this is a, I still remember it was Lavinia Forbes eye. He said, this is what it is, this, this is a kind of them. And he must have seen that I was interested in fossils. So he said to me, um, would you like to see a dinosaur fossil? And at that stage, I knew nothing about them at all. But uh, there, was, there had been one dinosaur fossil found in my state of Victoria, um, just to the, to the east of my home. And he opened another drawer, took out this thing, which he said, this is the Cape Patterson claw, a dinosaur claw, and put it in my hand. And I, I was kind of one of those moments thinking, I'll never wash that hand again. This has held the Cape Patterson call. And I, that was it for me. I was totally embarked then on a, I was besotted with, with dinosaurs and museums and science in general. So you know, quite important moments, I think, for me.